Equal rejects greed and avarice, you know. He respects all women, yes, he does. As he respects his own mother, yes, because. La vérité, Satya, signifie l'amour et la stabilité. Agraha, Amen, et sert aussi de synonyme pour force. J'ai ainsi commencé à appeler ce mouvement indien le Satyagraha pour décrire la force qui est née de la vérité et de l'amour, ou de la non-violence. Et j'ai renoncé à l'utilisation de l'expression « résistance passive » qui était liée à ce mouvement, à tel point que nous l'avons souvent évité lorsque nous écrivions en anglais. Nous utilisions à la place « Satyagraha ». Gandhi a été conféré le titre de Mahatma par Rabindranath. Et le mot « Mahatma » en fait est un mot lofty word parce que It just doesn't mean the great soul, which is the ordinary English translation of Mahatma, but it means someone who is enlightened. And I think Tagore very early came to the realization that there was something exceptional about this man. In fact, when you call a person a Mahatma, in part what it means is you have taken him out of the fold of the family and placed him within the larger ambit of the citizenry of the country. It was said at that time, right, uh, by people like Einstein and many others, that Gandhi belongs to the ages, right? I mean, not just to India, not just to the world, but he belongs to the ages. Would you like to be like Gandhi? Maybe. I think it's very hard to be like he was. I think he was a great man. And I think he taught many people to, to um, fight for their rights in a peaceful way. And that's what, what we like so much about him. Do you think Gandhi is relevant in today's world? I think so, because um, I feel that if I do something big one day, I will do it his way. His way of uh, non-violence. And I think that is the, the most intelligent and powerful way to, to guide the world. If Gandhi was alive today, mm -hmm. how would you reinvent him? to be more acceptable to the young generation. I don't think anybody would have required to reinvent Bapu because Bapu would have been reinventing himself periodically. The man who lived a life of experimentation would never have stagnated. So he would have reinvented himself as times changed. Pendant le Satyagraha en Afrique du Sud, j'ai modifié ma façon de m'habiller afin d'être semblable aux travailleurs asservis. Et j'ai également gardé ce même style lorsque j'étais en Angleterre pour la vie en intérieur. Pour atterrir à Bombay, j'avais un costume d'habit Katiawadi, composé d'une chemise, d'un dhoti, d'une cape et d'une écharpe blanche, le tout provenant du traditionnel moulin à tisser indien. Let's discuss what Gandhi is. So we'll do the brainstorming first. Yeah, we can do that. He said quit India because, you know, he would concentrate on these Indian business people like the Birlas, Tatas and the Bajaj. And where he are. Uh, the he, slogan he, he has taken, yes, the coin, quit the India. term that he coined. Definitely. So he said like quit India for the uh, foreign investment mm -hmm. and he could promote these Indian businessmen so that they can have their own economy. And he and also did promote India. Yes. If you see, India he promoted in his own way and the Khadi, the salt. It was just a business thing. It was purely business. Yeah. If we see Gandhi, when, when he was in India, before he went to England, he was dressed as a uh, traditional Baniya, how they dressed. When he went to England to study there, he changed himself. 
he thought that you know the western people cannot accept him so maybe he dressed accordingly so that he could at least say hi hello to them he underdressed because he had to appeal the people to masses and at that time that particular time the people the masses consisted of poor and uh, people who were underprivileged so he had to be with them same philosophy we have put it in our design the clothes that we have taken and the details we have put in it has to appeal the masses yet it has to appeal masses as well as the classes we can say so i don't want to kill the dna of gandhi's look whether it's a watch or the glasses we have given him the look of a business leader where it's lo- it's more of a a corporate look this the trouser is inspired by the dhoti and i would like dress up in a traveler thing because he has to be a youth icon as well we cannot f- forget youth at all and if we see the trousers they are jodhpuri trousers jodhpuri again it has a relation with royalty and then i'd also give him apple yeah. ipad tablet tablet yes because he always used to carry bhagavad gita yeah. but now it can be in a ebook to mm-hmm. so just go and sing with the youth Je croyais, au moment où j'écrivais, que pour avoir l'air civilisé, nos tenues et manières devaient se rapprocher le plus possible des normes européennes. Parce que je pensais que cela seulement nous permettrait d'avoir de l'influence. Et sans influence, il ne serait pas possible de servir la communauté au juste titre. J'ai donc décidé de la façon de s'habiller pour ma femme et mes enfants. Comment aurais-je pu aimer que ma famille soit connue comme Kadiawad Banyaz Les Parsis étaient alors regardés comme étant les personnes les plus civilisées parmi les Indiens. Et alors quand le style européen sembla être inapproprié, nous avons adopté le genre Parsi. En conséquence, ma femme porta le sari Parsi et mes fils la veste et le pantalon Parsi. The Gandhian view is that there is a there is an intrinsic relationship between your own body and the body politic and the so-called inert world of nature outside. what he did in effect was to transform his own body into a complete ecosystem and this is where you would have to look at how every little thing you know his enemas his fasting what he ate what he didn't eat what time he went to bed what he wore this is all part of what i call gandhi's own ecosystem Mr Chauhan if Mahatma Gandhi were alive today would he approve of your water business definitely not and not only Mahatma Gandhi i think it is way before him the banya community community did not accept the concept of selling water and uh, water is something which you are supposed to give free and you have matka outside your house from where Uh, people can take water and if you see that in 1949 where my father started the softing business he was bombarded by a whole lot of his friend saying that a hey, banya how can you be selling water but to justify what i'm trying to say is we are doing a good service to the community one for every 1 liter of water we use we conserve 10 liters of water by way of water harvesting two we give give an employment of 5000 people three if we can prevent you from getting sick for if 15 rupees will that not save you thousands of rupees of medical expense la terre l'air les territoires et l'eau ne sont pas un héritage de nos ancêtres mais un emprunt venant de nos enfants nous devons donc leur transmettre au minimum dans l'état où il nous a été transmis un pays reste pauvre en richesse tant matériel qu'intellectuel s'il ne développe pas son artisanat et son industrie et vit une vie de parasite paresseux en important tous les biens manufacturés de l'extérieur 
Il y a eu une époque où nous produisions quasiment tout ce que nous voulions. Le processus est maintenant inversé et nous sommes dépendants du monde extérieur pour la majorité des produits manufacturés. Nous ne voulons pas suivre la politique de l'autruche, ni avoir l'air d'être international et de perdre nos racines. Nous ne pouvons pas être international si nous perdons notre individualité, c'est-à-dire notre nationalité. I'm a farmer. I am a graduate in agriculture. I am working for the foundation, National Agro Foundation, as a director. The greatest motivation is my personal satisfaction, because as a farmer, I have seen the darker side of farming, or the problems of farming. But as an educator, uh, the two in the agriculture-based education, so I have seen the light, brighter side of the farming. So I thought I can make a proper blend of the technologies which can serve the farmers and that this plat this foundation gives me a platform to actually share this with the farmers fellow farmers for their betterment so the personal satisfaction is that most uh, motivation here one lead farmer learning it doing it showing it to others and then replicating to the fellow farmers so that is the ultimate uh, motive uh, ultimate motive of our foundation that is from the lead farmer to a lead village to a lead district J'avais seulement à l'esprit le lait de la vache et du buffle lorsque j'ai fait mon vœu. J'avais devant moi l'image de la cruelle manière que les bergers utilisent pour extraire les dernières gouttes de lait de leurs vaches et buffles. De surcroît, j'ai toujours estimé que le lait ne fait pas partie du régime naturel pour l'homme. He is our lead farmer, Raghupati is our lead farmer, I already told you. No? So he takes the technology and then he uses that for the welfare of the community and he is the motivator for this village. Actually he is a volunteer for this, he actually volunteers himself for these services for the betterment of his village. As a group in the village, they have availed the loans from the banks for getting this uh, cows from the income generated from the milk, they repay their loans. You are a bachelor? Yes, I am a bachelor. Why? Because I want to serve the service to the villages. If I am a married fellow, I it is not able to serve for the others. So, not only that is the reason, but it is. You got such a beautiful house. No, for your view it may be a beautiful house. For, but for in my view it is not a beautiful house. Because I also want to live luxury. But I cannot be able to live like, like just like uh, Chennai people or other incoming people. Why are there no young people? They don't like living in village. Yes, because here earnings are too low. In in Chennai, in industrial work, they earn per day three hundred rupees. But here, although we work hard for twenty four hours in agriculture, we cannot get three three hundred rupees per day. So we can average, we can buy 50 to 100 rupees. It is also not stable to us. So they want to migrate to the outer places and they are going and earning money. Sir. I don't know. Today, Mr. Raghupati, if someone came and said, I give you a lot of money for your land, will hmm. you sell? No, we won't sell because it is our mother. Land is our, just like our mother. We cannot sell it. We will enjoy it still uh, in future also. We will never sell it. So we want to live here, we want to earn here, we want to die here. 
What do you know about Mahatma Gandhi? He served for the nation without any expeditions. He wanted to grow the villages. So, as, uh, I know something about them. What about young people? Do they want to learn about Mahatma Gandhi? No. They don't want to learn. If we say them about Mahatma Gandhi, you go. It is our ancient period. Now, if we want the computer period, no, we don't want to learn how to kill Gandhi. Yes, some of them are saying. What is the aim of National Agro Foundation? My father called it as a second green revolution, which he said the objective is to make sure that the migration should be stemmed. For that, agriculture should be made viable so that we have no more slums, which is crowding over, because there is less land available now for agriculture. Because, you know, the main reason, according to me, is the causes are the population, pollution, and poverty. And to overcome that, a second green revolution was came into this thing that's National Agro Foundation's role or objective is to make sure that the purchasing power of the farmers has to go up. Gandhiji and father, I, why I relate to them was they were all not, uh, they were not looking at uh, the next election, they were looking at the next generation. That's the most important thing, the next generation. Look at the future. Why should a man at the age of 90, when he starts the National Agro Foundation to bring about the second green revolution, he wanted to do more and more. And it's like a relay race. You'll have to, somebody takes a baton and runs, and it hands it over to the next person, and that's how it should go on. In India, far too long we have built individuals. You have to build institutions. And it should be, you know, people should come and take over. I think that is all the, these are some of the learned uh, essence of Gandhiji's teachings, which are relevant even today. Il y a un art qui tue et un art qui donne la vie. Les belles étoffes que nous importons de l'Occident ou de l'Extrême-Orient ont littéralement tué des millions de nos frères et sœurs et condamné des milliers de nos chères sœurs à une vie misérable. L'art véritable doit être l'évidence du bonheur, de la satisfaction et de la pureté de ses auteurs. Si vous aviez un tel art ravivé parmi nous, l'utilisation du caddie serait obligatoire pour les meilleurs d'entre vous dès à présent. Si l'Inde doit atteindre la liberté absolue, alors tôt ou tard, nous devrons reconnaître le fait que les gens doivent vivre dans des villages et non dans des villes, dans des cabanes et non dans des palaces. Je pense que le fil que nous tissons 
est capable de raccommoder l'enveloppe et le toit de notre vie. I want to be an engineer. You don't want to learn weaving? No, ma'am. I can't because um, I know how tough work it is. Uh, in um, previous days, uh, there is a lot of people are trying to do this thing. And in those days, all are working together uh, urban areas. And, uh, it's not possible to do this thing in the uh, future, I think. But don't you want to learn this art from your father? He's an artist. Yeah, uh, something I know. I don't know exactly full and fully. So I don't like to know about it. My dad deserves it. Uh, it's end with me. No need to for my son and my future generation. Um, Four really members plan. maintaining for month three rupees three thousand incoming. Gandhi Gram was started more or less at the suggestion of. Mahatma Gandhi himself, probably. See, the history goes back to death of Kasturba. She died in 22nd February 1944. Soon after, a Kasturba trust was created, and Mahatma Gandhi himself was the chairman, with Sarojini Naidu as the treasurer. Even in those days, they collected more than one crore. And then Gandhi decided that it should be given to the responsible people in different states of the country to start some welfare activities for women and children. And one condition which Gandhiji had put was that it should be at least seven miles away from the nearest town. That way our founder, Dr. Soundram, who was personally known to him, was selected as Prithinidhi or agent for Tamil Nadu. She was a child widow. She was probably married when she was nine or ten and she became widow at the age of 12 and 13. What is the, your profit from legit papad? We provide employment opportunities from 60, 70 women and they earn a lot, you know, depending upon the input of labor. They may be making for 150, 200 rupees very easily. What are your future plans for the Gandhi Gram Trust? Future plans means first, you know, keeping the existing thing that itself is a challenge, but future means because the thanks we have got now 1000 self-help groups of women who think sky is not the limit, they want to do many things. <laughs> this is the Gandhian philosophy we are following. Gandhian philosophy basically you know every village should be self-sufficient employment opportunities should be created in the villages. So that is where whatever we have is a replicable model of village industry, how it can be run successfully. We cannot go for a large scale.
Maintenant, après l'expérience considérable avec les institutions publiques que j'ai dirigées, c'est devenu ma ferme conviction que les institutions maintenues par des fonds permanents sont souvent financées pour ignorer l'opinion publique et sont souvent responsables d'actes contraires à celles-ci. C'est le devoir d'un docteur en médecine naturelle que de non seulement s'occuper du corps, mais aussi de s'intéresser et de prescrire en fonction de l'âme du patient. Qu'importe la raison apparente de la fièvre, la cause réelle est unique et semblable. C'est l'accumulation de déchets dans les viscères. La science n'a pas pour l'instant découvert de recette pour rendre le corps immortel. L'immortalité est un attribut de l'âme. கடன்கட்டிட்டு ஒரு நாளைக்கு எவ்வளோன்னு சொல்ல முடியாது ஏன் இப்போ உங்களுக்கு இப்போ எவ்வளோ கெஸ்ட்டு நிறையா வந்திருக்காங்க இப்படி ஆள் வந்தாங்கன்னா ஒரு நாளைக்கு இப்போ ரெண்டாயிரம் மூணாயிரத்துக்கு ஓடிச்சுன்னா ஆயிரம் ஐநூறுரூவா தான் கிடைக்கும் நாங்கள் வந்து கம்மியான பில் தான் போடுறோம் அதனால் ஒரு ஐநூறுரூவா கிடைக்கும் காந்தியை பற்றி சொல்கிறத பற்றி தெரிஞ்சுக்கிறது ஏன் அப்புறம் அவரை பற்றி நமக்கு தெரியாதுல்ல காந்தி கிராமம்னா மட்டன் சிக்கன் சாப்பிடக்கூடாது அது இங்கே போடக்கூடாதுன்னு சொல்லுவாங்க Mon AMSA ne tolérerait pas l'idée de donner un repas gratuit à une personne en bonne santé qui n'a pas travaillé de façon honnête pour ce dernier. Le client est le visiteur le plus important dans nos lieux. Il ne dépend pas de nous, mais nous dépendons de lui. Il n'interrompt pas notre travail, il est la raison de ce travail. Il n'est pas un étranger dans nos affaires, il en fait partie. 
Nous ne lui rendons pas un service en s'occupant de lui. Il nous fait une faveur en nous donnant l'opportunité de faire ainsi. Dans mon esprit, la vie d'un agneau n'est pas moins précieuse que celle d'un être humain. Je devrais être réticent à enlever la vie à un agneau pour le plaisir du corps humain. Je soutiens que plus une créature est sans défense, plus elle a le droit à la protection des hommes contre la cruauté de l'homme. L'idole, dans le temple, n'est pas Dieu. Mais puisque Dieu réside dans chaque atome, il réside dans une idole. Dieu est une loi immuable. En temps normal, par la loi, nous comprenons ce qui est prescrit dans les textes religieux. Mais ici, ce dont je parle, c'est d'un principe éternel qui ne change pas en fonction des circonstances. Ceci est la vérité. Et c'est pourquoi je dis que la vérité est Dieu. Do you think Mahatma Gandhi is relevant in India today? Well, if truth, love, and peace, and non-violence as a corollary, or as the fountain of peace, are important to civilization, then he will always remain relevant. Because, as he said in his own words, uh, truth, peace, and non-violence were as old as the rivers and the mountains, and he had not invented them. And so as long as those are uh, important for the existence of humanity, he will always be relevant.
j'ai appris la vraie pratique de la loi. J'ai appris à découvrir le meilleur côté de la nature humaine et à rentrer dans le cœur des hommes. J'ai réalisé que le vrai rôle d'un avocat était d'unir les parties rivales. La leçon était gravée de façon si indélébile à l'intérieur de moi-même que les 20 années de mon activité d'avocat ont été dédiées à rassembler et trouver des compromis pour des centaines d'affaires privées. Ainsi, je n'ai rien perdu, pas même de l'argent, et certainement pas mon âme. Hamara jo kaam hai, wo aapke liye koi decide karna nahi hai. We don't decide for you. What we do is we put you together and take both your opinions and help you and facilitate you. Aapki madad karte hain ki aap decision pe aaye aur amicably settlement ho jaye. Acha aap film financer hain? Haan ji. Ji. Aur producer hain. Okay. The Delhi High Court in May 2006 inaugurated the Mediation and Conciliation Center. Do you think it has been beneficial to client and lawyer both? It is beneficial to both. It has brought about a change in the legal fraternity who is connected with the Mediation Center. It has brought about a sense within the a confidence sense within the litigants that a lawyer can also be a felicitator to settle the matters. It has also brought about a satisfaction with the litigant to say, my case can be settled at an early date with the intervention of the lawyer. He can't just say, I'll return the principal or a minimal of interest. What is the mediator's fee? We are not paying him, we are not compensating him for the time that he's putting in because most of us does this work pro bono. The purpose is to change the image of the legal fraternity in the minds of people. So the lawyers, I would say, says, let, let, if the clients are agreeable to 12%, let's go with it. Yes, okay, let's go with that 12%. If he's, but 12% but only if he returns it in six months. 18% even a day after that. What do you say? Fair enough, man. Both of you need to shake hands. Yeah. So, so hopefully now you've had a good uh, agreement and you will be able to uh, take loan from you for your next one. Take. Instead of going to court, <laughs> right? Sure. Sir, five, please. Six A or five A? In your opinion, okay. was Gandhi? You know, I was a good that, lawyer. Uh, I call him a good lawyer because, as I said, law is a lawyer is a profession to ensure peace, harmony, goodness in the society. And the fact that Gandhi ji was able to do that, I call him an excellent lawyer. Il n'existe aucune chose telle que le Gandhisme. Je ne veux laisser aucune secte après moi. Est-ce ce pourquoi vous vouliez me placer sur un piédestal inatteignable, sur les hauteurs gelées de l'Himalaya, telle une divinité et un Mahatma, et ainsi prétendre à votre absolution pour avoir suivi mes préceptes 